right, everybody, welcome to episode number 21, Irresponsibly Long, back in the studio once again for the second week in a row. <laughs> it feels good to be back. Until next week, where I'm, uh, I'm afraid to uh, inform you guys that I will, I will not be here. I'm no. taking a much-needed vacation. <laughs> <laughs> you, you've been grinding, man. I've been grinding hard, dude. Uh, a lot of grinding going on. Seems like a good time to, to, to step away, uh, to be honest. So yeah, where are probably you Probably no pod next week. I'm going to uh, España. Oh, my gosh. Yes. I'm going to eat a lot of food. It's going to be glorious. Sounds amazing. It's going to be glorious. I'm kind of tempted to just take like the whole freaking quarter off. <laughs> do it, man. Do it. Well, don't do it to the audience, but take it, take a, some time off yeah. the portfolios maybe. Yeah. I think there's a pretty good chance we just like don't go anywhere for a while. I um, think so too. But uh, we can talk about that uh, a little bit more in a, in a bit. Uh, we are streaming on uh, X for the first time, I think, on my account or Twitter or whatever the hell you want to call it. Nice, man. Finally figured that out. So, uh, yeah, welcome to anybody who's uh, who's watching on there, and hello to everybody on the YouTubes. I see uh, I see Feech and uh, Nick in the chat. What's up, guys? Good to have you. Um, if you guys are listening to this recorded reminder, we do this live 5 p.m. every Thursday, coming at you hot. Um, so subscribe uh, YouTube.com. Search for the uh, irresponsibly long podcast, and you will find us. Uh, we're trying to trying to juice those numbers. We're growing, feels good, but we want to uh, we want more, we want a larger audience. Um, anyway, how are you doing, man? I haven't talked to uh, haven't talked to you. You had a rough night last night. <laughs> <laughs> well, dude, we so recording for Alpha Alpha, we were drinking straight bourbon, straight Woodford Reserve, and that's like a as as one does. It's like a higher octane version. It was like a special edition, and. Um, it really caught up to me there at the end. We went to a cigar bar uh, after recording, and um, I just had this moment where everything kind of just hit me at once. You and had I, a little too much Zin coin. <laughs> I, I put some Zin coins in, and uh, those were not helping. You're down bad, <laughs> dude. I was down. I was down bad. I had to immediately just call an Uber and um, exit stage left. Yeah, it, uh, <laughs> it happened suddenly. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know what else happened suddenly? Uh, the S and P nuked today. God, yeah. <laughs> Which you just told me about. Like I, I was, uh, I, I was trading this morning. I took a little scalperoni and then I kind of left and played some pickleball. You were and playing, I had no idea that everything. You were playing pickleball during that. Did you have any positions open uh, this afternoon? No. Oh, no, God. I took a, I took a little, little teeny tiny scalp uh, in the morning. Caught, uh, caught a little bit of a move, and I was like, cool. I actually uh, did not see this coming. As I'm sure, look at this, look at this just down this leg. Is a, this is a hell of a, this is a hell of a candle. So, 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 what happened? Well, there was like this news. Well, a couple things happened. One is um, that one of the Fed chair guys came out and said, "Kashkari." Kashkari said, "Like, yeah, maybe, maybe no rate cuts this year if inflation is going to be sticky." which I think everybody thinks it's going to be. Nobody cares about Kashkari. Yeah, so then people were thinking, well, is this Kashkari doesn't make moves like this, and then it came out that Iran is um, going to fire some missiles at Israel or something. Like actual full-blown... Well, th that's what is... I don't know. They don't, said they're going to? They just said they're that... Saber-rattling? They were saber-rattling. They said they were going to. But yeah, that's, that's what I think led to this leg down. It's a fascinating little move. I mean, it's it, it's it's really interesting to me how these moves always happen to coincide with like areas on the chart. Like you don't. <laughs> so it's, it's like like that little manipulation higher into the fair value gap before we dump. Yeah, like this was like this is like a great place to short actually because um, oh, this is killing me because I, I actually was thinking about hedging this exact setup yesterday, and I was um. I was like, no trades, no trades going into vacation, no trades going into vacation. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I was just like looking at this because I, I don't know, like momentum's looked a little weak on the on stocks lately to me. Definitely slowed down a little bit. And uh, I don't know, I get nervous when I see moves like this, like where you have this, uh, you have this kind of strong impulsive move up, right? And then retrace and you just you just kind of sweep the high and close back inside and you get all this space down there. That's always like a, a recipe for disaster. So I saw that, uh, saw that gap form and I was like, mm, 
should probably just put some uh, some orders in there. And uh, I didn't see it. I didn't see it. I, I actually took a scalp today because I was just um, I was just trading to that to that gap. It's like a little bit of a a, a magnet. I just kind of got in here on this uh, this retrace into the one hour gap and took it up a little bit and then just called it a day. That's pretty good timing that you got out of there when you did, man. Yeah, I That's mean, pretty good. I actually wasn't on uh, ES. I was on NQ. Well, same. Yeah. Same deal. It's like a super interesting uh, little setup here, like in the beginning of the day, if anybody's uh, interested. Yeah, like thought price was going higher. Saw that little gap. Wanted to take a trade out of that. And then if you kind of come in here, five minute chart, pull up your little fibs. You get that. So you were buying into a discount? Yeah, I was just looking for, um, looking to buy in the discount in that one hour gap there. And then this is the, this is the setup, man. You get the consolidation and then manipulation. And then when, when do you know that you want to get out of there? Cause we run to a, a target level that's Yeah. Above. So I was just taking it up to this wick. I didn't even want to like, I didn't even want to fuck with going to above it so it just kind of took like a partial partial here and then the rest off there i gotta say you timed it pretty well because if you would have yeah. held on just a little longer man that would have been would have been ugly yeah well you know we usually just trade in like one little uh one little quick move this this is ah, this is so clean stocks trade so clean sometimes man look at that you had a little uh this is the entry here on the breaker Clear the breaker, enter there, boom, gone. Clean. Textbook. Love it. That's straight up ICT stuff right there. Beautiful thing. Beautiful thing. Anyway, I'll stop uh stop boring the audience with my uh, <laughs> with my stonk talk here. Uh, okay. <laughs> yeah, what what do you want to talk about today? What's on uh, Oh man, we had some weird stuff going on today. Uh I woke up and uh did you see uh, ETHGATE was trending on uh Twitter. What the hell is ETHGATE? <laughs> I did I did see something about yeah. this. But what's going on? You know that James O'Keefe guy? He's like a news reporter. He's kind of like a right wing, like investigative, undercover reporter. Kind of like a DIY news guy. Yeah, <laughs> like he gets a lot of people on video saying like crazy shit. Like he's gotten like the, like the Google employees on video talking about how like the AI algo. Oh, is like I, a scam. I like actually all. have seen those videos. I think he like made his big break way back in the day, like going into an abortion clinic dressed up as like a pimp. And what? So, so, <laughs> I don't what? know. So. <laughs> okay, so what was he saying uh, about Eve? I, I don't know, man. I just woke up and I looked in the Twitter feed, and it's just like, it's just like it, it, it looked like it was just written by like a Bitcoin maxi. It's like, oh, the U.S. government is using uh, Ethereum to like try to take over the. I, I don't know. I couldn't even fucking follow it. I stopped watching the video. There was a point in the video. Where he was talking, you know how Ethereum has like the splurge and the oh the yeah merge the, the, and the surge verge. yeah Wait, and, and also the the purge the purge You're familiar with the purge which one is that what the it, purge is like the the pruning of all the oh when you the, get the, rid the, of like the, the data get rid of the old old data yeah but you're not like yeah. deleting it from like the entire in, anyway anyway right, he's, right. He's, he's, he <laughs> comes to that video he's like and he's deleting data seems like this goes against the principles of God. of blockchain. No. It's... Why would you delete the data if you don't have anything to hide? I'm no, like, if, we oh, have, if we have like full <laughs> consensus, if, isn't the idea if you have full consensus on the old data, then you can kind of just trim that because we all agree that that's like the real chain? Yeah. Basically. Yeah, and I, I think there's there's still a mechanism for having like the whole, like it's just like every single you node could... doesn't have to run. Every, yeah, yeah. I don't know. I don't, I don't want to get too in the, the technical weeds, but it was stupid. And I, I was reading the, the comments of this and it was just like every toxic, like, retard bitcoin sorry i had, had to say retard <laughs> yeah. bitcoin maxis coming out just being like like one guy posted this video he's like vitalik admits himself there's like a back door in eth for the vips and oh it's just vitalik he's like he's just he's just talking about the l2s he's like mm, you know in the l2s they have to have like training wheels you know so the teams can kind of do but he, yeah he's, he's talking about how the l2 is like they're they're not fully decentralized yet and it, and it's just like i James O'Keefe's like, interesting. <laughs> like, I hate everything. Dude, first of all, that was a pretty good Vitalik impression. That Thank was pretty you. That was the first time I ever attempted it. <laughs> yeah, I liked it. I hope it, hope it, uh, so, <laughs> hope like, it came across well. Is this like, this kind of seems like a time for peak ETH fudding, right? It, it, I mean, like, I feel like we've been saying that for like six months. So at like, this point, I'm just like, <laughs> eh, you know. Yeah. Um, 
it, it's like always an interesting question in trading. Like, are, like are you, you can spin every, anything like any way you want, right? Cause one person you, I could spin this trade to you. It's like, Oh, like everybody's on the other side of the boat and all the money is made when you believe something that everybody else doesn't believe and you're right. And it's kind of true, but it's also true that like, it's usually just better to go with the herd. Yeah, you so know, you can, like that very viable strategy. It's like momentum just, versus contrarian. Yeah, see right? what the market's doing and just do that. And then if you see it shift, like get out. Um, and, and, you, and you can make money doing both of those things, right? But this is kind of like the uh, the struggle in my head right now. You know, it's it's like is ETH like I I was listening to Thousand um, X today and and uh, Avi was just he was just shitting all over ETH. It was just like basically it was like a bloodbath. He's been doing that for a while, yeah, right? He has, like, but I, he's been he's been very right. To, he's been to right. His credit, um, but he's basically like he basically said like ETH was like the ripple of the cycle, and I was like, okay, bro. What was uh, what was Armand's uh, line from yesterday? ETH is mid and crypto is broken. Yeah, so uh, look, I, I got to be honest with you. Like when Armand is in the chair next to me, God bless him, like screaming, "ETH is mid." I'm like, mm. that's like everything in my that's brain is like, signal. fade, 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 <laughs> fade. <laughs> you know, um, but it's it, it it's such a weird weird spot right now with just the dynamics of the market and the the ETF is especially. So the ETF that is uh, probably going to get denied uh, this probably, month. Probably, but like also like it's just it's completely priced in at this point. I mean, ETH BTC is just like recapitulated. The odds are, you know, they're like sub twenty now on the prediction markets. Yeah. Um, like everybody's exited that trade. The, the, I saw the ETH discount like just max widened again. Dude, but, it's at 25% yeah. discount again. Probably a very interesting trade actually. Like I actually wanted to ask you if you've been considering getting into this. Like I just I bought always, some. I just bought some. Yeah, like I'm like I'm wondering if I should just pour a bunch of my coin stock into the to the ETH E-trade, you know? Well, I don't know. I don't know. Like, I don't want to sell my coin though. Coin's been dominating ETH um night See. It's just like you're virtually, I don't want to say it's virtually guaranteed, but like I feel like within the next year, right, you're, you're, you're like 90% to have an ETH ETF and you're getting like a 24% just a 20, buffer yeah, on there? A, yeah, it's a 24% gain just on like at the time of conversion, right? Mm. That's pretty That's pretty nice. Yeah. I mean, you're, you're losing out, like let's talk about the costs of it. So you're losing out on staking yield. Uh, by not holding like spot ETH, whatever, and then you're the, also paying the, the airdrop, the missed airdrops, probably the missed airdrops, the, the worst thing. And you're paying two point five percent in uh, management fee to Grayscale. Yeah, so you gotta chop that off the top. Yeah, maybe maybe half of that, but like I don't know. If you had the money in your brokerage account anyway, you weren't you weren't farming. Right. So true. It's like so many it's so many interesting trades you can make right now in crypto. Like the other interesting trade that I, I think is still interesting is the. Is the Bitcoin miner trade again? Like I think another one of those trades that just fully capitulated out, um, kind of priced for just max pessimism. Yeah, it feels like. Um, I think that's an interesting trade. Uh, I like the leap options on those again because like those are so fucking cheap. I mean, to break even on like, I don't know, it's like two year hold to break even. Like the price has to go up by like three dollars. Really? Yeah, it's like I, I would take that you bet. Have, you have to show me that one. <laughs> that sounds that sounds too good to be true. Yeah. Oh man. Uh, and the the other one uh, I've been looking at is 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 a uh, Galaxy Digital looks. Oh my gosh! Interesting our, as well. Our good friend Bi Punks is. Uh, yeah, he was showing that to me a, a it, while ago. Showing it to me. But uh, I I think it looks like legitimately pretty good. Like if you're, you know, sort of bullish. I've done some market. research on this one, and I don't want to fud fud his bags, but. Um, what do you think? Give it to me. I'm I'm like not super bullish on this company. I think like it will go higher just be, because it has like beta to crypto, but um, it, it like they don't own that much crypto, net. Like they they report a number on their balance sheet that's like two billion dollars worth of crypto, but like most of it is borrowed, and um, they just don't. I don't think that they're they're like worthy of the premium that they're trading for. Novogratz. Who's, who runs that company. He's he been an insider buying like crazy, right? Uh, previously, back when they were like way lower, 
and he's like yeah keep in mind i wouldn't buy buying my my stock above seven dollars it's like at nine dollars now so he doesn't want to even buy his own stock anymore um all right, fine. I'm out. <laughs> I don't know. I just feel like there's a lot of ways to play crypto, and maybe that's, that's not right. my favorite. I don't have any tried five money anyway, so this yeah. point is moot. Uh, Feech in the chat said uh, Avi was shitting on ETH, but he did also say if you want Ethereum exposure, you should bid on L2s, which I found interesting. Been feeling bearish on the L2 trade. Yeah, I heard him say that, and I, I think that's kind of like a bad take. Like L2s have been ass. Um, like, 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 uh, especially Arbitrum been total dog shit. Uh, OP has been, been bad. That was like one of those, I think, but a lot of these like kind of consensus trades that just have panned out very badly. Damn. I just bought some OP and immediately I'm fucking just bleeding already. Yeah. <laughs> that was like bad, bad call. I mean, we, we, we talked about this on the pod a few weeks ago. I think if you want to play this, it, it, it feels like, like who cares about like OP right now? Like I don't. I don't know. I never use optimism personally. It seems to me like all of the action is on either base or like there's like a lot of um, hype on on Mantle. And Mantle has been a good trade. Like Mantle was up 14% today, I think, Damn. last I checked. And it, I mean, it's it's basically done a 2x while the market is kind of, you know, taking a big old uh, big old deuce lately. Um, so so to trading Mantle has been interesting and trading base has been, been uh, interesting. And I think there are some interesting like high beta plays within base and in and, and mantle but to play on to play base you just have to buy like meme coins right yeah it's interesting like which yeah i i think a lot of people want to like i, I feel like the mid take is basically like oh well base is bullish for op but like, i don't i don't know i don't i, I think the, the 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 meme coins are are, are are better are better they have been better you know something like toshi's up like 300 percent or so since we talked about it in december and like op is down probably i don't know if it's down but it's not really it's not moving not looking it's not looking so hot um the 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 really interesting play for me on base i i, I think is like dgen i i don't know if you're uh That's following farcaster yeah i like the layer three narrative like once you <laughs> once it's like a layer three it's like oh it's a layer well now this thing can be worth like many billions. Like it's, you just put an L, an L and a three. You know, it's like throw it's, another blanket on. He needs more layers. <laughs> <laughs> more layers. Um, yeah, I've been like nibbling. I I nibbled a bunch when it was down like twenty five percent the other day. I, I don't I don't know. It's 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 just run up so hard and then dumped like very hard, like insane volatility. So I don't. I actually don't know how to value it myself. But like I. It's one of the more interesting sort of like, like the, the very interesting beta plays to ETH have been Pendle is, <sighs> is, is slaying. We love Pendle. Pendle 26% up today, I think. Just, Jesus. Just a fucking beast. I know I really should not have taken those profits, you know, but like, I don't know. Can't be, can't be too upset. But yeah, never get mad about making money. The moon bag is the moon bag is pumping. The moon bag is like almost as big as the <laughs> <laughs> the moon bag is the bag now. Same bag now <laughs> uh, that it previously had because it just kept, just keeps going up. Um, so uh, Pendle's been super super interesting. Uh, like one of the more interesting high bit. Like if you're kind of into the idea that we have to pick between the L twos and we want to kind of like. L2 surf maybe like we I don't know like you want to eschew uh, OP for for like mantle like uh, obviously you could buy mantle but like I, I continue to believe like the best play there is to just buy puff um, is puff a meme coin on mantle yes okay yes puff is doing pretty well I think actually I haven't checked it okay yeah so puff chart yeah god damn should have bought more fuck that thing went parabolic Actually, meant to add the other day around like twelve or thirteen, and I just, you know, I just, I, 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 I need like a, I need an AI. If I could have an AI crypto assistant, it'd be like unbelievable. Like my own little kind of uh, digital, digital assistant, just be like, uh, AI buy buy puff. You know, yeah. Buy this, sell this, do this. But on the, like, if I could do that, oh my god, life would be amazing. Until it just nukes my whole account somehow well, but i just hate the fucking fragmentation like to buy this i'm gonna have to go through so many goddamn steps that it just 
bothers me. And I but everything's fragmented, right? Like you, you want oh, you want to buy something on Solana? Well, you can put money on Solana. You want to buy something on freaking Injective? You want to buy a meme quote? Well, you can put money on uh, on Inject. You want to buy Base? You can put money on Base. Buy, like it's just like everything. Yeah, it's welcome to crypto. Right. It's just so, it's like a pain in the ass. You want to buy Dogonals? Okay, <laughs> like get on a Doge chain, I guess. I like, agree, but it just like it can be a, a high enough effort. At, at a moment where I'm just like, eh, not right now. And then it just like kicks the can down the road. I mean, this, this isn't like a good thing, right? But the, yeah. the fragmentation within ETH is much easier to deal with. Like if you just live on ETH, it's kind of easy to port money over versus like I have money on ETH and now I want to go do something on like Bitcoin. You know, I want to like buy like an ordinary, like good luck. You know, yeah, that's so a fucking, that's a process um, pain in the ass that's a process but like uh, yeah with like the wormhole bridge and everything now like basically everything is the same it's everything is like one transaction away you know to to, to port money and it, it's not like ideal but it, it kind of is uh it is what it is it, it sort of sucks um I, I don't think it's a good thing right i mean it's not ideal not ideal i know I know some have been trying to, to, to spin this in a, a positive <laughs> yeah. light. It's, it's uh, sovereignty, baby. I don't get it. I don't get it. I, I want uh, I want to be explained why that uh, is a thing, but uh, <laughs> I don't know. Uh, oh, Crypto Duck, what's up, man? Welcome to the live. Tunsky, hello. What's up, guys? It's Beef. Would love to get your thoughts on DXYZ. I believe it's the first etf that allows retail to invest in private equity isn't that what uh kobe's working on as well he's like working on a, a way to allow people to oh echo echo it's kind of like that yeah something like that like, like a crypto angel list or something oh right i don't know uh beef i'm not really following that one so i would just be uh pulling stuff out of my ass although i, I, <laughs> I guess i could maybe pull up a chart later for you um let's uh, let's take this back to um eth for a second because we got kind of like an interesting spot coming up. I, I kind of clickbaited the title of the stream with the uh, ETH ETF denial is dot 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 bullish. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I know this is going to sound like the biggest cope of uh, of all time. Yeah. Right. This um, could be. There there is a logic here. So so imagine the ETF is approved in May. That would surprise everybody. It would surprise everybody. I would make a lot of money and I would actually strongly consider like selling a bunch. You would sell the news on that? I think so. I think there's 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 like two reasons. Like one, I feel like you're just you're just gonna run back the the, the grayscale dumping. <laughs> yeah, right? that, that's a like certainty. That. And like I'll be first in line on that. <laughs> and I feel like that's going to get front like I feel like I guess that can't really get front run because it's not going to, there's not going to be like a, I don't know. Maybe there is a point in time actually where the, the stuff changes and the percentage goes to 90 before it's like announced. But then like maybe people just start like immediately partially front running there because they kind of know it's going to happen. So who knows what the meta will be, but like, I feel like that's got to be short term bearish. Right. And I don't know, like a lot of people have talked about this idea that TradFi is not ready to allocate to the ETH etf yet right because they're still comprehending the bitcoin yeah what, what do you think about that i i kind of agree i i, I think uh you know I, I still feel like that uh tradfi is just full of boomers and these boomers are like slowly coming on board to the idea or the notion of bitcoin as like a portfolio allocation yeah and i i don't think that they're ready to like carve out a sliver yet for eth like the bitcoin one kind of makes sense because like they already had like a gold allocation probably or some mm -hmm. kind of like inflation hedge or monetary debasement hedge or whatever and um i just don't know what narrative they would like push eth into like a tech tech play probably yeah you have to sell it as a tech play i would i would assume it's like oh this is like the next nasdaq right right but like not only are uh, like I, I i agree with you which is why i'm kind of like I, I don't know i actually i don't even know what the hell i'm hoping for at this point like i'm so goddamn confused <laughs> <laughs> well hold on like help me understand how like so we talked about if if this thing gets approved if the etf gets approved what if it gets denied how how in your mind is that bullish so i think it's bullish because 
the denial will basically be like like the it's going to be like a kind of like capitulatory thing but like it, one that's like already like basically fully priced in i think so i feel like that would be a great place to mark an actual bottom right and i think once that happens like the market starts thinking like okay well but like what's next like you you give the market like something to kind of look forward to in the future which i think is good like if, like money is not stupid it's going to start realizing like oh well if not now maybe maybe later and then like as people like kind of think this through right not not only not only does tradfi need more time to digest eth right but like the all the infrastructure to buy it isn't even there yet right it, not not even for bitcoin that's going to be like a process that takes you know most of if not all of the year maybe even into next year to kind of get all of the stuff onboarded right and just uh because we had a question in the chat about um somebody says uh they think that the ETH etf is going to get approved um this spring because blackrock gets what it wants um blackrock's update for approval isn't until like the fall so this this like may approval date deadline is for grayscale it's for arc right Grayscale and Arc, Grayscale and, and Arc. I think and a third one. Yeah, but, but yeah, May is not. It's not the Black, the Black Rock. Rock yeah, deadline. Um, yeah, I mean, there certainly is a school of thought where you know people are just like they're gonna just be like whatever. I guess like why even delay this point? Writing on the wall. I, right. I, I don't know. Um, but I'm like I'm bullish on the approval in August or whatever for the for the reason that. Uh, is yeah. mentioned in the chat. I, I mean, I just look, kind of like it as a trade because it's just like one of those things where it's just like, it's just everybody is like literally on the other side of the boat. Like, you know, like only surprise uh, to the upside. Yeah. And I, I think the other reason like this is like kind of bullish is it's, it's not only just bullish for ETH, it's just bullish for the cycle in general. Like, I think we need to pump the brakes and not just like throw everything all at once in one gigantic like orgy of buying right like, it, <laughs> it, like to, so to give like the market something to look forward to like six months or nine months from now or, or whenever it actually is when is blackrock august i i can't remember if it, i think it was august but i i read yeah it. i thought I it was august too but a lot of people are being like december for like and i don't know why they were yeah saying that but it seems like august would kind of be like the real i remember reading august but i um you know i'm not looking at it right now so i don't fully i don't remember exactly yeah but like i i think we're gonna have more of a roller coaster up and down not like a clean blow off you know four-year cycle type thing anyway and 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 i think that would be better i think it'd be better if it we just move more like at a you know kind of like these 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 ups and downs and ebbs and flows but nobody's like getting blown the fuck out yeah i kind of like that too it's a little a little healthier uh, just to like grind higher. Mm hmm. Yeah. Uh, Tensky BlackRock wants a delay and it probably will happen. How odd it's all upside though. Also could take the five to one bet on poly market that it's approved. Yeah. I mean, you probably can't place that. I don't, I don't know what kind of size you can bet on poly market, but it is an interesting bet at five to one. Uh, I think, uh, trick finger said, uh, BlackRock ETH ETF is seventh, of august oh so sure enough yeah. thanks yeah no problem um so yeah i mean i i continue to be meh on like yeah how uh, eth right now like i don't like i'm actually kind of deciding like right now like what do i want to buy it in the beginning of this quarter because you know i've i've been thinking we'll get a chance to buy dips and i think there probably actually will be will be bigger dips i i, I think and yeah, going through my head right now is like, well, do I do I want to buy Ethereum, or do right. I want to buy Bitcoin? Do I want to buy Solana? Do I want to do I want to buy memes? Um, it's, well, based on uh, recording yesterday, I realized that I have ETH maximizes, so I'm an ETH maxi, and I need to like probably buy some more Soul, based yeah. on what uh, we were all talking about and our portfolio allocations. So probably got to get some Soul if if we get a Dipperino. So Soul is it's it, it it's a good trade, it's a good trade. There's like undeniable strength there, right? There's undeniable strength in the the on chain metrics. There's just undeniable strength in like the Soul 
ETH chart, like the soul ETH chart looks like it's just like uh, Godfather, somebody massacred my boy. Um, <laughs> it's so bad. Uh, and the soul BTC chart is like very, 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 very bullish. Let me, uh, maybe I can throw that up on the screen for a visual. Um, woo, nice move today. Let's zoom out a little bit though. I mean, it's a good looking chart. That's a good looking chart. Like, do you want to buy that chart? Or do you want to buy that chart? Momentum versus contrarian. Yeah. I mean, the ETH BTC chart is kind of in one of the, it, it's like, will they, won't they, you know, like, will it, is this, is this the puke or is this the, uh, is this the uh, little uh, deviation and then we go higher? It's certainly does not look as good as the... Uh, no, I, I feel like uh, that the yellow line you drew there below is uh, something that might come into play. Uh, that yellow line is very un in play, unfortunately. I haven't looked at this chart in a while because it's just like giving me uh, uh, pain. The, the, the interesting thing about the chart, like if you're bullish, the reason you are sort of bullish is because um, we have this like very high time frame mid range here. Let me just like delete everything on this freaking chart. Everybody's going to have a, a freaking <laughs> uh, uh, seizure over here. Um, poof, it's gone. Um, yeah. So on the ETH BTC chart, you could think of all of this as like a big old range, right? Yeah. So option one, if you are bullish and you want to continue, well, actually this isn't, yeah, I guess it's like, a, we'll call it option one. If, you, if you're bullish, it's sort of like a deviation around like mid-range, reclaim, and go. Like you, you, you see this a lot. Okay. If that doesn't happen, then price is going to start looking for demand, right? And then demand is, is your, 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 your first potential demand is going to be, you know, in this zone here. And, you know, you probably look below the mid-range of that zone. So 0.038. Oh, and that would probably be it's a big old oof. That would probably be in the golden pocket of this entire range. Oh, you, yeah, you want to like uh, OTE that bad boy? Here, we'll see what that looks like. But yeah, you're you're you you're probably right. Da, 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 da. There we go. Yeah, look at that. So that is that is the golden pocket right there. Point six one to point seven nine. So. Yeah, I mean, this is this is a bad look right now because the the week like the the weekly right now is is just diving below it. Like previous flirtations with this this line have been kind of reversed pretty quickly. So now we're like closing candles underneath, and yeah, it it, it looks it looks pretty bad. I'm I'm not gonna not gonna lie, and it, it, even the three month now, which I, I think you know, you could make like a bullish argument for is like looking sketch. Like it just looks like it wants that zone. So I don't know. Like I, I am personally not looking to buy any more <laughs> ETH than I already have. Um, it just doesn't look appealing from like a, a technical perspective. Like the main way it looks appealing is if you take like a contrarian viewpoint, um, like the idea that well if you're right you will make a bunch and like I, I i do agree with that like if you know there is like an etf approval in may and then like i'm wrong and then there's like a bunch of institutional demand for it like this thing will yo-yo so fast in the other direction it'll make your head spin but is that the base case like do you want to buy that or do you want to do you want to just buy more so it, it's just like so hard to wrap my head around like adding to soul around like 200 bucks um you know but it's a stronger chart. Um, Can we look at the Seoul chart? Because like, if I what Seoul Seoul USD Seoul USD just because yeah. like if I'm gonna deploy money on a on yeah. any kind of dip, l l let's take a step back and just look at Bitcoin first, I guess, because I okay. The end the end of a quarter is like really interesting time because you have this ability to stay, take a step back and think about like the next three month candle. It's like a pretty long time horizon to be investing in, or you could look like think like two candles ahead, yeah. right? You get like a six month trade going on. Um, it's it, it's 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 interesting. 
it's it's super interesting because it, it gives you a, a potential to to kind of position a lot of money for like a very long term thesis instead of dicking around and like the, I really I really the, like this perspective chart yeah um like the the monthly cl- the the quarterly close on on Bitcoin was was I, I would say is, is very very strong candle right you have like a massive expansion candle and you close like very cleanly above the all time high we like that so your bias here like if you're like a lot of trading is just like looking at big candles and thinking like okay where is the next candle going to go right if you're bullish on like a, a like a weekly candle for instance right you can trade on like the hourly or the 4 hour chart and then you're sort of trading with that weekly wave like you know like the the the, the bias of the weekly bullishness is going to sort of carry you in that direction and and, and then the same thing is true here when you talk about like a three month chart, you're, you're expecting, like I'm expecting a uh, bullish candle, maybe not exactly this quarter. Um, and, and I'll explain why in a second, but maybe, you know, two quarters from now. Um, the, the argument for why we wouldn't be bullish this quarter, why we might print like a, like a doji candle or like a consult, you know, some sort of consolidation candle, like a ranging candle, I, I think is like a good candidate for this quarter is that, um, I made a video on this like last fall, like one of the first videos I made where I talked about uh, quarterly theory and Bitcoin. And, you know, we talked about how we were expecting like a manipulation move that could send us into like a big bull run. And, and lo and behold, that 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 happened. And it, it it's not like super magic. Like it's like there's this like, cyclical nature of, of price. Like um, so you tend to have like price like you, you could divide anything up into quarters like years obviously but you could divide the day into quarters you can divide the month into quarters whatever but like for the purposes of the year you very frequently like have like a like a, like a period of accumulation you have a period of, of manipulation then you have a period of like expansion so that's just like a fractal you can find in any time period. and this is just like a fractal that repeats over and over and over again and then that fourth quarter is often like a continuation or like a retrace right and then like often you can start like the sequence with accumulation or you can start the sequence with like continuation or reversal of like the, the previous one. Uh, but either way, you're you're either you're either sitting on like a continuation or you're usually sitting on like an accumulation in that first thing. Right. OK. So for for Bitcoin, we basically had this is like your accumulation candle. This is your um, manipulation candle. Then we had expansion. Right. And then the first quarter of this year was also expansion so this was continuation of trend Mm -hmm. so in my mind that's that's like a it's again like all this stuff is probabilistic like you you can't just like bet the house on this but like you're trying to find these like edges so like i think there's like a high probability given that you had like this very huge continuation of an expansion move to start the year that you now will have like a period of like cooling off right yeah and then you like you would have to accumulate again before you yeah. expand again so on a three-month candle like an accumulation candle can be quite a nasty dip right like when you look at the frame of this candle like if we were to if we were to go down like just to like here right that's like not that much of a move in terms of this candle right but that's Doesn't, actually yeah. that's a 20 percent you know dip yeah, you know which is nothing in crypto seems land. so plausible but you could end up with this sort of like kind of candle that goes down and up and kind of chills there and then you would expect in q3 some sort of like fake out again followed by like a, a reversal back to the upside and that's what the again. that's what that doji candle would be when you have uh a move down, but it closes inside. Well, the doji is usually like a period of indecision. It's usually like a range, right? It's sort of like range bound, but like sometimes within the doji, right? Like if you're kind of zooming in like on a weekly, like if you have like a quarterly doji candle and you zoom into like the weekly, like you can still have these kind of nasty moves within there and you can see within that sort of like a a manipulation for sure. So I, I don't think it'll manifest as like a mega down move on the three month candle, I think when you look on like the weekly chart, you'll see that move kind of happen. And that will kind of be like your cue that like we're going to kind of expand again. So that's sort of my default right now is that I should be taking a step back. There's probably a period of time for us to cool off. I think again, 
probabilistically uh, thinking probabilistically. The the big question is like, is it all over? And like a lot of people think it's over. You know, your, our boy Kamikaze on Twitter said Thicky. it's over. Thicky said it's over. I don't know. Like maybe he doesn't think it's over anymore because he changes his <laughs> he mind. He flip flops like so seconds. much. He's been uh, <laughs> saying it's over. Um, good cases for why it's over. I think. I, I just think it's like it's just going to be a freaking confusing cycle. I, I think alt alter obviously not trading like they have been in the past. Like the market is wised up. I think to. We talked about uh, how the market is, I think, wise it up to like the, the the FTVs of these coins, the massive unlocks, right? And like we're we're doing all these airdrops, we're just dumping billions and billions and billions and billions of new supply onto the market. Incidentally, like an interesting argument for for buying ETH, right? Because you have this fixed, but basically, well, actually, like deflating asset in a world where everybody is just just dumping. Yeah. tokens everywhere right but like when you're when you're issuing billions and billions and billions and billions of new tokens like money has to come in to, to pick that up or these things just they bleed to death like this was like the foundation like the great trader gcr had this like epic post at the end of last bull cycle where he's just basically it was just like here's the inflation schedule on all these coins like absent like this these are just all going to bleed to death and i'm going to just and he just just shorted like just 25 coins just and just made the probably Dude. like a hundred million dollars gcr is mount rushmore yeah. of crypto traders gcr is like my is the main thing like uh keeping my eth thing alive at the moment um, is he bullish on eth yeah he is like he's in like like i'm like in some groups with him and like he he is he he's long like, say no more baby i'm buying and, and he has this kind of like i think like longer term like institutional flows based thesis which i think is correct i think is correct um like if if, if you want to be like a trillion dollar asset class like you're just not going to get to a trillion dollars um with, with kids like trading meme coins like you just need like this massive amount of flows to come in and I, I i think the key to that is like the institutional money via the etf via blackrock tokenizing things on chain so like yeah, like the trader in me is like, why do I hold this thing? You know, but like I, I can't trade my entire portfolio. Like I just it I just think it's still like a very good like one, two year thesis, right? You just have to you just have to just wait it out and in the meantime you're getting paid, you're getting compensated pretty well for all this like restaking and everything. So I, I'm not even too worried about waiting. Yeah. Yeah, the airdrops are Nice. Like I've, def I've definitely like one of the main reasons I have been like so cucked is because like, I'm just like just farming Eigen and farming <laughs> yeah. my, my ETH Phi on top of Eigen right. and my, my Renzo and my, my swell and my, kelp. Like, just kelp. <laughs> and it's just like, I don't, I don't know. It's Are you uh, still holding on to that ETH Phi? ETH, Ether Phi? <sighs> I still have it. I'm still trying to figure out what to do with, wormhole as well like to play with wormhole honestly is probably just turbo dump it as soon as you get it but then like buy it lower buy the dip but like i also just like it's also just like a lot of trading i'm shit i don't know I, i'm probably just gonna dump it and just just buy more soul with it right yeah. now to be honest and just not worry about it and probably just dump the ether phi and Get more just ETH, buy I more guess. ETH with it, yeah. and just it's just probably just keep uh, dumping all these things. And I feel like though ETH. the ETH ETH Phi one, like that thing can probably keep going because it's the only. I agree, like because yeah, it's the only like LRT LRT there. thing. Everyone wants to speculate. Yeah, I totally get it. The narrative makes sense to me. I'm just also wary of this like endowment effect you have when you just get gifted. You you get like these airdrops and like you just think that they're valuable, right? You don't want to sell them because you have. But like in reality, it's just like okay, if you sold them, would you would you buy them back yeah. right now? Is that really what you would do? Like if you get a thirty thousand dollar wormhole airdrop, you're telling me like if I sold it and you're thirty thousand dollars in cash, like would you really go out in the market right now and just buy thirty thousand dollars wormhole? Of wormhole? Yeah. There's no fucking way you would do that. No. Right. Like it's just it's just not. It's just not going to happen, right? So, like, I, I've I've been talking about this, like, in in recent episodes, like, I'm really trying to just condense, like, what my actual like high conviction theses are, and just try to like simplify that. Like, I, I like I sold off like a bunch of my OP for for cash, um, 
and I, I moved a lot of it into mantle. Um, and I, I, I had already bought, like I had already maxed out my, my puff allocation. So I had that, but like, cause I was like, well, this just like, just seems like a better trade to me. Like I, I kind of believe in this. So I'll just do that. Right. And then I kept some of it in cash because I do think we're going to have like a, a buying opportunity. Right. And it's just like all these other things. Like I was long Uniswap and made a good chunk on that Uniswap trade, but I'm just like, what, what is my, like, do I have a really good thesis for this right yeah. now? Like, I, I don't know. Like me, like I could make one, but like, if I just had this cash, like if I sold it, like, would I go back and buy, just buy Uniswap? Is that the thing I would buy? You know, probably not. Yeah. I kind of feel like the Uniswap thesis played out and like take the win, and move on, find the next one. Yeah. It's probably another good, like, longer term play but like totally yeah um who knows who knows let me just pop into the chat here aj went all in on eth e last week in my roth good play in the roth nice love it love it no communication between sec and eth etf yeah i know kind of a kind of a bummer um is athena gonna blow up the oh yeah that's uh, that's the question of the moment. Is the, is Athena the next Luna? Oh God, no! I think Athena is legit. The problem right now with Athena is that MakerDAO is just like just fucking minting dive for like that's like the wait. Hold on, I didn't I didn't understand that component. I hadn't heard that one before. Like so, makers participating in Athena. Yes, in a way that is like extraordinarily risky to the extent that Ave is basically like we're going to take die out of wow collateral wow which is kind of a big thing In- incidentally i think i'm pretty sure the maker chart has been just on a freaking tear oh my god uh i own zero maker wow. and i'm coping my buddy evan showed this to me so hard like uh yeah what was this yeah, like nine hundred and seventy dollars back in July. Mm. I was part of Vance Spencer's uh, Smell portfolio. Smell, that was like synthetics, Maker, ETH, Lido. Yeah, another. that portfolio has been mostly trash. Like synthetics had a, like, had a little moment, but it's been terrible. Lido is dead. Like, Lido's dead. Thank God I got out of that fucking trade. God. DJ and Spartan was all over Lido. I wonder if he's still. It's bullish. so hard to trade in this. Like, it's so hard to be in this space. Like, if you are not like fast money trader, like, because like I was like, oh, this is like a very obvious trade, and then it became like apparent that like, oh, actually, this thing is gonna get market share just sucked rug from it, like crazy. Um, and yeah, it's just it's like a completely cucked coin now. So you got to just be trading uh, memes. Yeah, this, this is the other, but the, yeah, this is the, no, seriously, this is the problem. Like if you are going to be a trader, right, you are going to be fast money. It's like, well, why don't you just be like the fastest money with this in the, the real trash that goes up like the most. Um, it like, it, 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 again, it seems like the market has just like had this collective realization and learning. Like the market does in fact look like it's kind of barbelling, right? It is just like, yeah, why don't we just trade memes? Yeah. And Bitcoin. And Bitcoin. Yeah. Yeah. It makes sense. And like, yeah, you, you can find these isolated pockets of outperformance. Like, like we said, like Pendle has been like an absolute crusher and, and, and Mantle uh, has been doing well. And obviously there's been like a bunch of uh, AI coins that have been uh, crushing lately. Um, but yeah, for the most part, it's been a, it's been a barbell cycle and it's been, uh, it's been, it's been tough to deal with, man. It's been, uh, it's been tough to deal with. Not gonna lie. Um, you got anything on your mind, or should we hop into some? Uh, Let's uh, move some, on. Hop into some charts. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah so, I, I think I was alluding to earlier, like what what are going to be sort of like the like if you want to play ETH beta, what are your fastest horses? Like the fastest horse I think has has been Pendle. And it's been like one that you can kind of put like good size into. It's done, done super well. But like if you're talking more about like the L2 trade, um, yeah, I think I think we, we talked about Puff earlier, but Puff is like a <laughs> 75 million market cap. That is still so small. It's pretty small. And um, they uh, they memed you, didn't they? These they guys? did, yeah. <laughs> well, for that reason Maybe alone, I'm in. Me. I know. <laughs> I should have bought more uh, immediately. Um, 
the good thing about puff too is it's like the only thing on like what else do you buy on mantle i don't i don't know I don't so this know is like anything else this is like the meme coin yeah whereas if you chain. go to base you're like what is base right beta right know? there's like tochi toshi mochi a bunch of other toshi, crap mochi tybg <laughs> there's so much stuff um, yeah i mean i mean i st- i still just think the most interesting thing on base right now is is dgen and i'm you know i'm putting a lot of effort into thinking about how much i want to allocate to this it's something i can see running a lot more obviously it's had like a huge run up but um Good pullback right now. What are we? We're you know forty percent pullback, so that seems pretty yeah. reasonable. Yeah, I've been I've been nibbling around like the uh, the three cent, four cent level. Um it still kills me. Like people dude, people in the Discord were talking about this when it was like what of a what kind of a multiple is this thing? Six thousand eight hundred percent. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> wow. Good job. Good job off half a Discord. Yeah. I mean so some some people have done super super well on this, and I know it's painful sometimes to buy these charts when they're up like a bajillion percent, and you're like, well, how could this? How much upside is really less on this? Right. I think of this way all the time with all these freaking memes. Yeah. Um, but it's like crazy. Like if 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 you get like a max stupid kind of cycle, right, and like the L three narrative takes hold and base starts going crazy, like this thing can go to it could, it could go to like fifty billion, right. That's a hundred X from like you could do a hundred X from a 500 mil market cap. Right. So like I, I, you don't have to play in these like absolute shitters to make really, really good multiples. Like this is actually a good time in the cycle to take a step back and think about stuff that's in that kind of like sort of like hundred, hundred plus million yeah. kind of range where it's like definitely not going to zero, but like it can still do numbers right like and a lot of this stuff blue is chip be... shit coins is what you're talking about <laughs> yeah um it's interesting is interesting stuff to buy so th- this is this is a big thing um the big thing on my radar that i'm uh i'm looking at um other thing i'm thinking about i think i alluded to this earlier is a uh, solana like i'm thinking about solana a lot like how much do i want like my solana bag has grown at a much larger pace than my eth bag and it's like you know, now like a much larger percentage of my portfolio than it would, it would ever be. Um, but, uh, yeah, I'm like, do I, do I add here? So let's go, let, 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 let me actually, before I do this, let me go back to the Bitcoin chart. Cause I never even finished my thoughts on Bitcoin. Cause I think Bitcoin is the most important thing. We're going to start there. Um, where do I want to buy Bitcoin? Where does it look good? Cause we were, we were talking about the, th- the three month candle and I got kind of, um, Get kind of lost in the sauce and, okay. and drifted off as I did, right? So, okay, let's get so back bullish three month candle, kind of like high time frame bullish. Okay, like that's where the wave is going. I like that. So then I, I you know, I drop into the monthly, uh, monthly candle also pretty mega bullish, right? Big expansion candle closes over all time high, um, pretty good. Um, if you're thinking this leg is going to continue, like one of the questions, like like, you know, people who are traders who have some awareness of this, like ask, they're like, okay, well, is this going to trade into this gap here? You know, when do gaps like this, like get filled? Um, it's actually like a really interesting thing to, to think about. Um, and you can like kind of learn a lot about your trading just by like thinking about this sort of one, two, three, uh, like fair value gap pattern. Right. So this gap here, which, you know, is like 59 K roughly there's a lot of people calling for 52 K it's like a very popular target right now when I look at this according to the system I trade it doesn't look to me like this gap is going to be tested so you're you're seeing something in this chart that tells you this might be a breakaway gap where you won't go back down yeah this is it's a breakaway gap as it's as as it's called in the uh so what what do you see in here that that sort of signifies that the, that this is going to be breakaway so the the key to this is the third candle right so you've got the candle before 
candle one, kind of meaningless. You've got the candle that makes the gap, right? And then you've got the third candle. Okay. What happens after that gap is 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 made. When you have a candle that has this sort of like massive expansion up and close above, not just the high of the previous candle, but like also this other high. Mm-hmm it's much less likely that price is, is going to kind of come back and revisit this. Yeah, I can actually, that makes sense to me. Versus like, uh, I don't know if I'm going to find one in this chart. Um, I probably should have prepared this ahead of time, but you'll often have like, a, like if this candle, like imagine it, it closed here, right? And then the wick was like this. This type of candle you would expect to actually trade back into that gap with a high probability but this this to me looks like it wants to be a breakaway gap right so that's my bias until proven otherwise right and again like we're we're trading here we're not predicting the future we're we have like hypothesis we're updating it on the basis of new information but like this is like the the assumption right now right so this idea to me is pretty important because it means that like i you know, I, I can kind of assume that that 59K level, you know, is, is, is likely to actually not be violated um, on the monthly. And that gives me a framework for thinking about this on, on the weekly chart. Let me make this a thicker line. There we go. So there's your, there's your monthly candle there. So now I kind of come into the weekly chart and it's like, okay. Um, the weekly is, is, is a mess, right? You just kind of got like, it's, it's, it's just like a range right now. Okay. You got wick up, you got wick down. There's not a whole lot here, but like knowing that what's happening on the, the monthly, you can kind of start thinking like, as I zoom in, like what might happen. So I think there's a pretty high probability that we put in the quarterly bottom already to be honest or potentially we, we revisit that maybe like run it or retest it That's a i think call. it's a pretty good chance right because like again like i'm not really ex- i'm not expecting this to be violated i think if we do it like it it's not that it like literally can't happen of course it can happen i think it's less likely and i think if it does it it sort of changes the structure of the market in a way where I like, instead of expecting like a kind of quick move back up, like a sting into an area and then go like, now I might be looking for like a longer period of like finding a new bottom, putting in like a new, new accumulation, like, Wait, like stuff has to kind of repair. Yeah. Cause I, I'm, I'm experiencing a little bit of cognitive dissonance, I think, because when you were explaining it before thinking about it on a quarterly perspective, you were talking about how this is likely to be an accumulation phase, but then you also say, no, the bottom's in and we're just going to go higher. Well, the bottom is in doesn't necessarily mean that you're just going to go higher, right? You could, we could put in, like, we could, we could go down to, we could go down to like 60K. We could just do this for. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's <laughs> like, like, there's no reason. So that's the accumulation. That can't happen, right? And if this happens, this also could lead to like a pretty big bleed out in alts. Yeah. You know, like it, it is possible that like, like sometimes there's situations where Bitcoin ranges and alls actually kind of go ham. But then you also have the situation where Bitcoin ranges and then on these like nukes within the range, the alts like kind of nuke more. And then when Bitcoin runs up, like they don't quite recover as much. And then like over time, they like really bleed out. So I think that's something to, to look at and something you want to just keep in mind when looking at kind of like the individual charts there. Um, yeah, like on the daily, like I, I kind of saw this this recent move, and like I, I think I told you I took a long out of here, but then I ended up closing it, unfortunately, because I was just wanting to not be a, a psycho before vacation. Um, but yeah, we had we had this nice little kind of untested uh, daily order block here. So, uh, what day are you flying? By the way, just get everyone yeah. prepared. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, this price action is so clean. I mean, look, look at this. Like we, we basically bottomed like exactly at the mid range of that order block, you know, like you just like kind of passively 
put a put an order there and you, you you did quite well it's going to be interesting to see how this daily candle shapes up because we could end up putting in like a this could be like a little little bpr here like a gap in gap out mm -hmm. which which is it's pretty bullish um I, I i would think like if that's um so what, that's what happens when when like you see a bpr like that uh balanced price range that's a bullish signal to you because I, I always thought that that, that kind of acted as a magnet for price again. Sure, but like you're expecting price to kind of retrace into it and then and then bounce yeah, higher. Sort of like a manipulation in a way, but okay. I, we don't have to get like super super technical here. Um, but yeah, like that that's sort of like my bias on Bitcoin, right? So if I'm not really expecting like sub 59k, then I'm kind of like okay, like market's probably fine. Maybe we get some chop. Uh, alt bleed out, but I'm kind of like looking to buy and now I'm thinking like, okay, well I want to buy some all. It's like, well, maybe I want to buy some Solana and now I'm going to like look at Solana, keeping in mind like what's probably going to happen with Bitcoin and then kind of, you know, and, and yeah, I think it's there. a good, good framework. <clears throat> so Solana, like on the, on the three month is like a similar setup, like mega bullish candle. Um, you could argue of course that this gigantic wick here, however, is potential like resistance in a way right it's very, it's very different from bitcoin just clearing all-time high like this is just like a gigantic area of like super high time frame supply right um so that's that that's that the, the monthly candle also pretty bullish but again like you're not like in price discovery or yeah. anything but but it looks uh looks pretty strong uh the weekly on solana is is kind of interesting actually because th this is actually a good example of what i was talking about before right so here's your weekly uh for your value gap with this like nice expansion candle um but then like what happens on the next candle you kind of sweep the high and you, you end up with a candle that doesn't close above so if i were to uh use the the lesson you taught previously you would suggest that this could probably go back inside that fair value gap i think there's a good chance like there, there's more this is more art than science like the the main there's a big wick here, right? When you see a huge wick like this, that wick is like a fair value gap on a lower time frame. It's a sharp move down, a sharp move up, like just right. typically like and that wick itself like often ends up as like support. Okay. Right. So the fact that this wick is here, I think muddies it a little bit. Got it. Um but I, I, I think in spite of that, like I, I do you think there's like a really, really, really good chance that you get to trade $160 Solana? So I'm like, I, I'm actually just sitting on my hands right now planning to buy here. Yeah. So you would put in uh, some bids at that 160 ish yeah. level. And I think if, if you sting into this gap, right, you're looking for like an immediate move kind of back higher. If you don't, like if you sting in and like say put in like a lower high, now that's a sign to me that this entire leg up is over, right? Because like one of the main questions you have when you're trading is like, am I getting in on this leg and then the leg's going to go higher or has this leg topped and now it's going to retrace, right? Because mm -hmm. if it's going to retrace, you, you, you want out. You want to find where the bottom is and where it goes up again and get in there, right? right? And again, this is getting into some of the 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 more uh, nuances of trading. Um, so apologize if this is too dense for anybody, but, no, I, think but I think it's like super useful. I think right? it's pretty cool. And so, so if that happens, right? Like if we get a sting in here and like kind of fail to put in a new high, like, like I might take this trade and I might like cut it. Cause I'm like, okay, now I'm looking for like just a retrace of this leg. And then what I'm doing is I'm like looking at the bottom of the leg, top of the leg. And I'm like, okay, where's, where's a good entry and a discount. And what's interesting about the, you know, the weekly gap is it's, it's, a, it's in a premium. So like if this gap was down here in the point six, eight, I would feel better about it. Like kind of, you're just like YOLO long. Yeah. I mean like, well, it just changes kind of like, like here I'm expecting, like I want it to sting kind of come back in and then just go right. Like I don't want it to kind of go in and then just kind of chill there because then i'm like oh no price is going to seek discount again that's what that's what price does it moves from discount to premium discount to premium you know it gets expensive it gets cheap 
right? Th th this is like a cycle that continues. But then I'm basically like, okay, now I got to look for a new place to buy. And then you just, you're just, you're just kind of looking at this whole zone here. It's like a likely area to retrace into. Um, so, you know, top of that is, is, is quite a ways down, right? Yeah. What's the top of that? Like 126. See. Wow. I know it sounds crazy, but that's a price is not seen since, uh, March 4th. <laughs> <laughs> it's so ridiculous when you like put it like that. Yeah. Like you have to like check yourself when you're talking about trading these altcoins because it's just like, you, 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 you're like, Oh my God, like it can't go that low. And it's like, <laughs> buddy, it was there six days ago. <laughs> like, yeah. Stuff moves. And right. it, when it moves against you, it's, it's, it's super, super nasty. Um, these little kind of like, kind of see these like wicks here. See yeah. this like wick, uh, here that, that produces like a big uh, candle. I'll yeah. change the color of that. That's also an area that we could kind of actually bounce into and just kind of go out. Cause that would be actually in a discount. So that's another interesting level, like 143 or so. Um, let me change the color of that so that it looks uh, different. Okay. And, it, and if I zoom into like a daily or like a four hour, it probably look, yeah. So if I zoom into like a four hour time frame, and yeah, now you can see there's like a consolidation there. Right. So this looks interesting as well because now you could be like, okay, this whole consolidation has never been tested and it's basically the one that gave us this huge leg up. Right. And then we kind of fail to put in a new high possibly. Like, I, yeah. Yeah. Like I actually, I actually have shorts like up here. That like, looks, so yeah, if, looks pretty weak. If price comes here, like I'm, I'm planning on taking it just kind of back down. So like, I'm like actually going to, hedge up there if if the market gives it to me if not like whatever um but this could be an interesting trade too like coming back down into here you're talking about maybe running these lows like so you got a low here like 140 you can bid maybe this low here at 137 so also another interesting spot to to bid so those are kind of my areas i have on the brain for soul but is the base case scenario for you still just uh sideways grind higher like for Bitcoin, for sold into, no, I, I, I think like keeping in mind what's happening with Bitcoin because 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 of what I see on the weekly with Soul, like in the context of you know this three month being in this kind of like supply zone over here, I I think it's unlikely. It's possible, of course, it's freaking possible. I know it's gonna sound like I'm hedging, but like again, like nothing is guaranteed here. Like it is possible. We just kind of just reverse nuke upward out of this consolidation and go higher. I just think if that is to happen, it, it probably comes from running that low and, and going into the 160s first. And again, I want to see like a wick, like sharp up. Like I don't want to see this candle kind of come in here and then like start accepting down there. That's that's probably like, mm, and when maybe you, I want to get out of this. And like what would you back and lower. What would you see on the charts that would tell you that it's like accepting? Would it be like a couple one hour closes or like four hour closes, daily closes? What would you need to see that like, ooh, this is not. I mean, this is a weekly candle, right? Like you could buy here and kind of like just wait to the end of the week and see what happens and look at what the weekly candle looks like. This is kind of the beauty of like trading the weekly or like you just invest on the weekly as like yeah. a spot buyer. You have like a lot of time to watch how things develop. You're not going to see something happen on the hourly or the five minute chart and freak out and dump the whole position. Like it's much more my speed a day. It's much more my speed and probably a lot of the people in the, in the audience too. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the, the other, the other thing to consider about this range here, like this, this is the yearly range, right? This, this range I drew out. Cause you see the bottom there. That's the bottom from January. So this is the yearly range. So this is the yearly mid range. Yearly mid range is like a really interesting level, right? Um, the other thing you want to see if you see price coming into this range, if you want to buy it is like, you don't want to see it coming into it with like a lot of momentum. Like if you see like weekly or daily fair value gaps coming into there, you gotta like pump the brakes a little bit. Like, cause there's a lot of bearish momentum. You don't just blindly buy the level, but like if, if price is kind of like, so like slowly bleeding into these levels, you can kind of like, you can kind of buy them with like a little bit more confidence because it's, it's not like somebody is just like market selling all the way down and just going to kind of like, uh, God. just nuke you. I feel like if we, if we got there, you know, if we got to that mid range, yearly mid range, I would probably get a little greedy. I can see myself and be like, Oh, well now I got to wait for something in a discount and then uh, give me the golden pocket. And then it just never happens. Yeah. 
I don't think you overthink it too much. Like, like these high time frame levels are generally good. Like yearly mid range. Like if you're bullish, like yeah, of course it could go lower. Like like we said, we could go. We could revisit the low 100s. Like if if this is like kind of like a weird like mini bull run that like dies for like three to six months and then kind of comes back something like that then like a 50 percent drawdown in soul like this isn't even a 50 percent actually what is this this is uh that would be oh yeah it'd be 50 percent um that's just par for the course like that of course that can happen in like a super volatile altcoin right so got to be yeah got to be prepared for that um and you know like keep in mind like the the low of last quarter's candle was 75 so even a move Damn. down to 100 is st you're just still in like last quarter's range it's not necessarily like breaking the whole structure where we're just going to go back to 20 bucks or something right yeah like you probably would expect this previous high here at like 126 to be like a pretty good target actually you know like the market likes those levels um you know so you get that the confluence there with kind of maybe just this is what coinbase did before it like kind of went up it just like tapped the very top of this monthly zone oh yeah remember that, that just, was like just nick the top of your it, perfect it, rectangle it was so perfect and it was it literally just tapped it yeah so you don't it, it like again it's not that easy it doesn't just trade into the mid-range and go up every time like sometimes it just like and just takes off and you don't get an entry it's like it's it's, it's like a easy game which is why the like the best play is to just kind of like identify levels that are good and just like buy those levels and assume that like you need to also keep cash to buy the level below it and the level below it. I feel yeah. like having like three levels is like pretty good. Yeah. Like the first level is usually too high and the second level is often correct. And then the third one, like it often doesn't get to, but then you always have the optionality to just deploy that cash ag again later. So I think that's kind of like a good simplified framework for, uh, uh, for uh, people to, to to operate under to BTD yeah. to buy the dip buy the, the, you f you forgot an F sir <laughs> oh yeah right you forgot an F all right let me check back in on the chat Tom Nom Nom high and cry has been my strategy is that buy high and cry okay <laughs> that's that's cool uh, Tunsky love it Stephen thank you Tunsky I love you I love I love the chat. Love it. Uh, AJ soul is a beast for sure. I just can't stand the community rather eat glass. <laughs> That's fair. But all these communities are pretty stupid. I don't think the soul community is that bad. Actually. I kind of like the soul community. Like the worst thing about the soul community is that it has these people who have this like unearned sense of like intelligence. Like they're just like, Oh, just because price has anointed them. And, and like most of them are probably still down 25 percent after all this <laughs> <laughs> but they're sitting here like oh your coin didn't go up oh you stupid ethan why didn't you buy some it's like shut up bro this is like your first fucking cycle you know shit you're like you, you just you come at me with your piece of shit solana nft like but then profile pic on, on the other Twitter hand you get like bitcoin maxis and they're fucking awful yeah bitcoin uh, bitcoin is Bitcoin is the worst community like the not the whole thing but like the the bottom tier of the bitcoin community is the worst community in all of crypto. <laughs> it is like such, like everybody is like, just like fucking wet dish rag. Like it's just like <laughs> unbelievable. Like these people are cavemen. And it's it's like the um, the lack of critical thought. It's just like unoriginality. I, I, yes, I, I literally view them as like just the people who join the Jonesboro cult. It's the same thing. It's just like you clearly don't know anything. You're just repeating shit people told you. Yeah. You're 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 a moron. Like have some humility. Have just be like, what if I'm not what if I'm wrong? I don't know what the hell I'm talking about. It's very possible I'm wrong. I'm just blindly following somebody because they have fucking laser beams coming out of their eyes, you know? Maybe I'm wrong. Um Tunky says, What about like the bored ape community? <laughs> So the board ape community used to be like the worst, but they're just like, they, it's like now it's just like mocking a homeless guy in the street at this point. <laughs> yeah. You're just like, what do you just do? Don't kick a man when God. he's down. Can I actually bring up crypto punks one more time? Cause, uh, I still you haven't bring up anything on the show. So we just, I, we're just flowing. I still haven't bought them, but like I, uh, I think it was Luke in our discord, uh, sent me a tweet that, um, there are like over a hundred punks that have borrowed against their punk. Um, and they they borrowed um, what is it like at forty 
They got above a 40 ETH price, and so they're already underwater. So they're going to lose their punks probably. And does that, does that like you change price? But if they're punk holders, they're probably rich. Well, true. And like the guys who get, like, let's say you get, um, you receive the punk as collateral at 40, 40 ETH. Like that doesn't mean you want to sell that punk immediately, does it? Like you're probably just happy to get in the punk at 40 ETH. That's like why you enter that trade to begin with. It's possible. Yeah. So I don't, I don't think it's going to like cause like this nasty, like liquidation thing. No, I don't. I don't see that being a thing with punks. Like, I like I when I, when, I, when I went to NFT NYC last year, like when I was that two years ago. That was two years ago when I bought my uh, when I bought my punk in in the, the heart of the bear. Like I, I was like this was a concern I had with apes, right? I was like, you don't want to own this thing where it's like everybody around you is like some twenty three year old whose entire net worth is in this like one JPEG. <laughs> like I want to be in the one like I, like when I went to punks breakfast, right? Yeah. Like it's people like what do you do? It's like oh I'm I'm like a VC oh I built this protocol. It's like oh okay you guys all have like a hundred million dollars right? right? So if your punk goes down in value, you probably don't even notice. Whereas like if these guys apes go down in value, their whole life is ruined. They for, for you're just like in a whole community of four sellers. It's not where you want to be. I agree. Just I, from a pure trading perspective. I think you know? um, punk's brunch uh, was yesterday. Like NFT NYC was going oh, on. Oh, yeah. I forget NFT NYC was going on. Yeah. God, talk about like a, that must be a, I don't know. I'm sure people who were there were like, no, it's not sad at all, bro. There's so much exciting shit happening. And it was like a really <laughs> awesome vibe. And like, I mean, I'm probably just being a hater. <laughs> um, but like, yeah, I just think of NFTs right now and I'm just like, oh. Yeah. At least all the ETH I burned isn't going up anyway. So it's like, whatever. right. It's <laughs> equally bad. Small, <laughs> small <laughs> consolation prize. Uh, I oh guess. Oh my god. Uh Tayrar. Tayrar? Did I pronounce that right? You spoke about Athena as a whole, but what are your thoughts on the ENA token? Seem to bunk the trend of airdrops tanking on airdrop uh like the like W. Um yeah. Yeah. I mean, this chart is three days old, so like not a whole lot I can uh tell you about it. Uh to be honest, it's not something uh, I would trade because, like, I just don't have the I don't have the price history. I don't have any frame of reference, and like, I I don't consider myself smart enough to trade things solely based on fundamentals. And I also just don't think fundamentals matter on any like time frame. Like narratives matter. Like I think if you understand narratives or what narratives are going to come up and you understand flows like those things matter a lot but like i don't know i i don't have a strong opinion for um the token i i don't own it and i've never really considered buying it i should have farmed it um i don't know i had a reason for not farming it well i like it ended up being a bad reason like because you made like well i I was thinking like like you you first of all uh put me on the trade that they were doing that the trade that they're doing we were doing manually in the bear and the reason why i didn't want to do it is because i didn't want to get a freaking stable coin yield in a bull market that was a huge reason i didn't do it um also like um yeah that was i think that was the main reason i didn't do it but but i also was aware that the airdrop would probably be valuable but like when i did the math on it I was like, mm, it's like, whatever. It, it's good. It's going to be good. But like, I think I can do other things with the capital that ended up being an incorrect, uh, calculation because the airdrop was so, so freaking uh, valuable that it was just like, all right, totally messed that up. Uh, oh God damn. You're pulling up the crypto punks this is the punks, chart. Uh, this is the, I mean, this is the punks token, which I think tracks the floor price. This, oh God. What does this chart tell you, Steven? Oh, uh, this is just giving me that, like, this is like the Bitcoin, like, bouncing ball from, like, uh, <laughs> in 2018, or it's just like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what, why is that cliff there at the end? Does it have to be? <laughs> Maybe it's fine. I don't know. Like, I honestly, the other, when was this? This is, yeah, I mean, couple of weeks ago i was like i really should just sell my punk like i i should it's the financially correct thing to do <laughs> like i just know i will make so much more money doing other things with it 
And I do feel like ETH is just like confused right now. It's like start. It's it's Ethereum has like an enormous marketing problem. It's a huge marketing problem. And I know like Ethereum doesn't have like a marketing department. Unlike Solana, apparently, which is buys ads and shit on the internet. By <laughs> They're the making way. killer videos. <laughs> yeah. By, by the way, side note, um, in when you're in a bull market, there are things that like are appearing in front of you, like mostly via your Twitter feed and stuff. And it's very easy to have like a false perception of like reality because like everything is being filtered to you through this like one little thing. Right. And you don't realize it, but behind the scenes, like influencers are being paid to shill stuff to you. Right. Um, the algo itself is shilling you because you're clicking on something and then it's like, Ooh, he's interested in this. And it just feeds you more and more and more of that thing. And then pretty soon you're like, Oh my God, like this is like, uh, this is, the, this is like a real narrative and I'm an idiot for not being in there. And then you FOMO in and then like you realize like you're in Luna or something. Um, <laughs> Wait, Luna, Luna last cycle was like a very painful thing for people who were like mega bearish on it. Oh, yeah. Because you, it was like a year like or more, right? Where you had like all of these people dancing on your grave constantly oh, on was, Twitter. It was flying. Like for... co every, everything, everything you post, they post that little like, ooh, cope, like little patrick bateman meme on you and <laughs> <laughs> like you just you felt like you're taking crazy pills but like ultimately in the end when the tide goes out see everybody's dicks or something as warren buffett said and <laughs> you can see who's swimming naked <laughs> <laughs> i like your i like yours better <laughs> and then you see what everybody's packing right <laughs> And like most of the stuff you hear right now and like even a lot of the stuff like I'm telling you, like I like so like the AI stuff, right? When I'm telling you about the AI stuff, like I'm already preloading into your brain that all of this will go to zero and it's right. just a narrative trade, right? It is it is it's just all hype and nothing will amount to anything in the next two years, right? But if you're like new to the market, it feels like everything is like a real thing. Cause like all of these projects like that aren't like bitcoin or ethereum they have like enormous marketing they treasuries they're yeah. dumping like all this money into like crafting a narrative and pumping tokens because like insiders they're there and they want to sell tokens like all this shit going on right and this is like the bull case for just like sitting in like bitcoin in ethereum because like you can kind of like tr like you can at least trust those to tokens right you trust those like narratives because they're just they just they just are they just like yeah. are what they are right like nobody's running freaking ads like the, the solana foundation is legit like running like google ads and stuff like against ethereum and it's like it's like a deluge of anti-ethereum sentiment like marketing everything like marin's making videos the freaking witch <laughs> yeah. um, like, solana ads i saw that yeah like you <laughs> and, like, and some of them are funny like the one we played yesterday on the pod that was funny like david's like that was an ad and i was like yeah i know it was an ad it was a funny ad. it was funny <laughs> as fuck it was funny sometimes you just have to laugh at like a funny thing it's like yeah, i know yeah. it's an ad like <laughs> okay hold on max brings up a good point about this crypto punks chart he says it looks like eth btc uh nah no no it doesn't kind of no it doesn't i mean maybe like if you squint and you cut off one half of the chart with zero context yeah but it's a little a bunch of lower highs it's a, it's a little it's going down it's to the bottom of that range this is kind of the bouncing ball chart and it bouncing ball chart usually ends poorly the bouncing ball chart, you, yeah, the bouncing ball fractal is bounce, 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 nuke, and then you either die or you kind of do one of these and you go to Valhalla. But like, okay, like here, I'll show you the just for for people who have not seen the Bitcoin uh, bouncing ball, like this is a uh, this is the Bitcoin bouncing ball right here. There oh. you go. Oh yeah, and then it sure does cliff there at the end. Bounce, 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 dribble, dribble, dribble. Ah! <laughs> right? Um, nice. And that's, that's what the freaking punk chart looks like. And Sure does. Uh, so glad we pulled this up for you. <laughs> I, I legitimately think I'm costing myself like a million dollars holding like a punk instead of like dog with hat. But, you know, it's probably... <laughs>
it's probably just something I'm going to have to live with. Yeah. I, I like, I, and then, like the moment you sell it, it's going to fucking zoom, you know? Yeah. So you have to factor that in. Like you have <laughs> to factor in like how much you're going to want to actually kill yourself when you dump the bag and it actually reverses. So like the problem with NFTs is you can't dump half the bag. Right. You can't dump 80% of the bag and keep like a kill myself bag. You have to just dump the whole yeah. thing. Um, but yeah, Max, it, uh, does not, it does not look good. It does not look good. Uh, Tunsky, sound like we need to sell Baden. Oh, yeah. Let's look at some memes. Let's like lighten the mood. Okay. Let's, like, let's do some memes. Um, how's Baden do? Baden is crushing, I think. Well, it was crushing as of like a day ago. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, it's up even more. Bro, I... Uh, what the fuck? Oh, my God. It just won't stop. Uh, oh, my God. Ah. Uh, Bottom sixty nine cents four hundred. I bought this thing here, Eric, right there. I'm very happy for you. Well, hold on. When we pumped <laughs> to here, I was like, "Yeah, I'm gonna sell like eighty percent of my bag. Take my, take my six x gain." I think that's a good. Seems move. reasonable. I think it's a good move. Like. Uh, you don't get to see the right side of the chart that doesn't exist yet. I am now in the, uh, I think I'm in the six figure club of Baden fumble now. Oh, well, yeah. that sucks. And then it's going to keep, <sighs> it's basically a crypto punk at this point. Yeah. I should have added, this is like a, God, this is some like meme TA. This is like a, this is such a good structure to add. Right. So, you get this zone here, right? Now, you have this kind of area here as well, right? And this is like, um, this is kind of like, a, I feel like this is kind of like a retail support line right here. You have this a lot where you have price make like the higher high, right? And then you're like, oh, I'll buy on the support there. And they're just kind of like eats down below. Um, but when you have this, you have this like consolidation and a new high, but it's this kind of weak high kind of comes up and retests. Like very often it just dumps through and goes down to that bottom zone. Um, and a lot of people buy here. Like you didn't get hurt too bad in this instance. It only went down like another well, like 20, 25%. Um, but this is like a common thing you see in these charts. Um, I should have bought that. Ah, damn. Oh, well. Good meme, good meme, Bowden. We knew it was the meme. I was advocating for this meme, like I, I just, I just got this meme. Sometimes you see a meme and you're like, yes, I yeah, understand. I, know. It. I see your, I see your circle on the chart that on the far left where uh, you initially bought it. Fail. I, I know. Fail. Mega fail. Um, yeah. I also, I took part in the. Are, are you in Costco hot dog? Hot dog. Hot dog. I, I bought some hot dog bags. I got, I get, a, I got a good entry too. I mean, I. I Got some, yeah. I got some at like three, two, two, two cents, two and a half cents, and then I bought a bunch on that dump around there. I think I think the hot dog has a dollar fifty program. The hot dog has a bun for sure. Is it a dollar fifty <laughs> programmed? <laughs> uh, chatter. Any of you guys in the Costco hot dog? <laughs> Who's in the Costco hot dog? Oh man, gotta, gotta, gotta love that one. Um, oh yeah, somebody, somebody in the in the. Uh, the Gem Hunters uh, thread in the Alpha Alpha Discord dropped uh, Tuker. Tuker Carlson. Tuker. Tuker Carlson. Tuker Carlson is oh my sending. God. <laughs> God oh our my Discord is so good. God. Oh, brother. Yeah. It's kind of interesting. Like, you had a lot of days to buy this. Look at that. Yeah, a couple of weeks of this doing nothing. And then, like, since yesterday, it just it's moved 2000 percent and we're like why why aren't the kids buying arbitrum don't the kids understand like the future potential of yeah. the sequencer fees sequencer fees the sequencer <laughs> fees man like they, uh, or i could buy tuker <laughs> i i want to throw a big congrats to everybody who's in tuker in the audience because yeah. i feel like the, that there's many congrats boys take take those profits i might I, like i don't know I'm, I don't know. I don't know how much I, I, 
what bugs me is that like i hate that this is like a repeat meme of like the bodden you know like i just feel like the repeats never i i did buy some dolan (laughs) tramp i wonder how dolan tramp is i actually haven't checked it in a while Is, is it still trucking okay we're up bigly I bought some Dolan Trump for like 20, 20 cents or so on that wow. dip. Okay, good. I had to diversify. Um, <laughs> w- 70 coins. I mean, I was originally like, look, we don't need the Trump meme because like Bodden's a kind of like, a, he's, he's a bit of like a clown figure, right? So his meme has to be clownish and like yeah. Trump is like a meme. and like his So it doesn't meme, work because he's, he's already but, a clown. But like, but like it is like make memes great again, you know? So it's not like, it's not really like clowning on him. It's just kind of like a funny thing. I don't know. But like the other Trump token is still worth a lot more. So, okay. And, and bottom is like 400 something million versus 83 million. So, okay. Um, bottom is going to be very interesting to see what it does is going into like full blown election cycle. Like it's these things are, hard. these things are just like attention sucks. Right. And when like, I think there's like attention in the world, they just like leech off of it. Right. God, it it's just going like, to go so much higher. Right. It has to like the next couple of months. It would be like the sickest thing ever if Baden just like flipped Doge. <laughs> could could happen. I mean, like I I'm pretty sure Dog with Hat flipped Arbitrum. No, really? I think so. God, I I, I think so. This, this is this is where we're at in the cycle. Dog with Hat. I may have uh. Yeah, traded back that. Yeah. Arbitrum is very slightly, very <laughs> slightly bigger than Dog with Hat. Oh, Optimism is below. Look at that. Dog with Hat flipped Optimism. Oh man! Wow. I mean, th- this is the perfect summation of this cycle right here. We got Dog with Hat above Optimism. I know it's fucking insane. <laughs> I don't like it. I don't like this shit. I don't care. Like, why do yeah. why do why why does it bother you? Because uh, I think it's just so stupid. Um, but that's sort of what makes it playful and fun for people, I guess. But I just think it's so stupid, and I don't like that. I just think there are things about optimism, and there are things about all these tokens that are stupid that I I don't like. Right. Yeah. Like again, at least when you buy like the the dog with the half, there's not like a bunch of beef VCs and like advisors who just like got tokens just dumping on you constantly. Right. Yeah, like all these true. coins, there's just like a bunch of advisors and they have tokens and like the day of the month comes and they just just dump tokens, just dump, yeah. dump, 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 dump. <laughs> you're just like you're just going uphill against all these people dumping on you. So it's very yeah. reasonable to me that in a world where all the tokens are freaking memes anyway. Like you just just trade the meme. Like it it makes it makes complete uh, sense to me. It makes complete sense. I mean, some stuff is like, oh yeah, me, I mean, immutable flipped op. That's interesting. Still got internet computer up here. I haven't checked the. Uh, actually, I haven't checked the Coin Gecko um, in a while. It's getting less and less kind of like max stupid as time goes on. Like it like the. Like the top 10 looks a They're little more starting reasonable. to make like a little more sense. Like we're still not there. What the hell is Ton coin? Ton coin? <laughs> what? what? Number 11. What? And you don't know what it is. And that you was, literally do this for a living. How is Cardano still worth $20 billion? <laughs> I like, don't know. It's like going up every day, really. Like you can't short any of this stuff. The the only thing I really like about Alex Becker is that he has this like running meme where he just like just like makes these posts where he just like casually slips in that like Cardano holders are always having their wives banged by somebody else or something. He just like, <laughs> so he, just, like well, just, he just weaves it into the post in like a funny way, which is like it's just it's just I, I think it's like very funny trolling. Um, I, I don't know why that still exists. What else is in here? I, I feel like internet computer has been, I bet you internet computer has been on a terror. I haven't looked at it. It's like an AI coin now, right? Just pivot to AI. Did it? Insane, cl- insane clown posse coin. <laughs> what is, no, what is, what? I hate it when they have the giant wick. I can't auto size it. Yeah, I mean, looks. Coming back. It looks pretty good. Unfortunately, boys. Looks like you might have to buy some ICP. I actually bought some. Uh, I've been like averaging into fetch because like um, 
I'm just trying to think, like, what is, like, a really stupid coin and a narrative that I just know is going to go up a lot? And it's just, like, I know it's AI. Oh, it has, I know it's like, coin. AI in the name. Yeah, Need I'm just, it. like, what's going to, like, really make me want to kill myself if it goes up a lot? And, you know, this, this you know, I... <laughs> Need it. <laughs> uh, yes, it's probably going to just dump on my face now. I get some I get some good buys in in this little, you know, maybe the maybe the rectangle holds. Hopefully, hopefully magic rectangle holds. I don't know. I'm 50-50 on it. Um, yeah, I've been nibbling it a little bit. I bought some Doge. Nice. Bought some Doge. Bought more additional Doge. Bought some at like 18 cents. But chart's been looking not so hot. Not so hot. Ugh, I hate these. They just kind of run the high and dump. Mm. Not good. Yeah, it wouldn't shock me if we just... Trade it back down to the bottom of that range. 13 cents or so. Mm, painful. Oh, you know what else I bought? I bought Dog. I bought the Doge NFT. Wait, what is that? Okay, so I don't know if you're familiar with this, but last cycle. Are, are, are you familiar with the original? The original Doge, the dog? The, yes. Yeah, yeah, I am familiar with that. So... Where is this chart? Would they like tokenize uh, the NFT itself? Yeah, they sold off the NFT. There was actually a bidding war between GCR and Pleaser DAO. Yeah, I saw that. And I think Pleaser DAO won. I think so. And and GCR, I think, has said that one of his greatest regrets in trading is not bidding. It was like more for this. Pleaser won it for like seven figures or something. Yeah, yeah. It was a it was a large purchase. Yeah. Um, but like the, the 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 Doge, the original Doge is this 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 dog in Japan named oh, I can't remember the name of the dog now. It looks like Kobayusu or something. <laughs> I don't know. Um, you know, that meme <laughs> came about in 2013 and Reddit. Somebody made some posts like, "Look at this Doge," and it was just that classic photo where the dog's like, you know, <laughs> yeah, and then kind of took off. So it's it's like um, it has this just internet prestige, you know. And I, I think there's really something to it, but like, yeah, they 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 tokenized it into this dog Doge coin, but it trades under like dog USD. And I think this is kind of like an interesting play. So I've I've added this to my. Is this like a is this like a fresh chart situation or no? This chart goes back to last cycle, but it's it's a not that far from price discovery chart, and it's a it's a chart where you had. Uh, had a whole lot of sideways. Yeah. So, what is? It? How long was this consolidation? This is six hundred and eighty-eight days of straight sideways. Man, what a buy this was if you were paying attention. Seriously, like you just could have gotten that for like. That's a tight. That's a tight spread there. You know, it's a pretty tight spread for like a complete shit coin. Yeah. You just like negative. 35% to the bottom if you buy the top of the range. That, that's good. Um, so yeah, I, I feel like this is like a couple hundred million market cap. You can totally see this going to like multi-billion. Yeah. I mean, Doge is already up there. Yeah. So why not dog? Yeah. Why not? The The, the thing that's going to be interesting to see how it plays out with the memes is that like there is obviously much more of a dilution effect with memes because like you just make infinite memes. Yeah. Like these projects, even if some of them are kind of memes, like can't just like spin them up in like one second, you know. So I don't I don't know how that's gonna play out. Well, that's why I like Doge of, of all of these because like I feel like that one has staying power and I don't have to be fucking on it and like playing this musical chairs game all the time, you know. I'm just less active and I don't want to be thinking about this stuff too much. Yeah. Max wants to look at Omnom chart. I haven't looked at Omnom. Omnom? That was Omnom. Can't even keep track of all this stuff, man. Like, it's like a full-time job. Doge eat Doge. Omnom. Okay. Interesting. This is on Doge. This is on Doge Swap. What the heck is Doge Swap? Is this, like, on the it's on Doge, Doge chain. blockchain? Oh. Wow, there's stuff on Doge blockchain now. Oh man, it's getting so meta. Wow. 
The Doge blockchain now has meme See, coins. Hey, bro, do you own your Do? Is your Doge on the Doge chain? Did you buy it on the Doge swap? Oh my just, god! Mm. Here we go. Oh man, people are learning just so many dangerous things on this podcast. Um, the first meme coin on Doge chain. I know. Um, oh, have you seen this? Have you seen this website? Pump dot fun. No. Oh my god! So this is the, somebody launched this on uh, Solana, and you just. You basically could just like print a meme on here and then it's kind of got like a bonding curve and you can kind of just scroll through the thing. And it's, it's, it's like early stage meme investing. So you, you kind of get into like the very early allocations of these coins. They're on a bonding curve, kind of like the old NFT mints yeah, um, yeah. used to be. And then when they hit a particular amount, they like deploy oh, with like really? locked liquidity Damn. and they're kind of like vetted as like, you know, not having all the, the scammy things. So you this is put into the, really like, so yeah, early, we're just like evolving this. This is like seed rounds for yeah. memes. They, they calmed this website down a bit, like a bit. It used to just be like seizure. Like the memes were just going all over the place. Um, but they actually just launched on blast. Okay. So blast is really just turning into meme chain. Just absolute, uh, KSI's forehead. That's funny. <laughs> that's funny that's a funny coin <laughs> hope i don't accidentally see anything uh super racist on here yeah. i hope they screen him oh the dress the dress i remember the dress i feel like somebody's had to have made that coin is it blue for you right now somewhere somewhere there's probably like a telegram chat where everybody's there's like there's like just like four 14 year olds just pouring over they're just like at like a, they have like a at their mom's table and they're just like they got it like up on the screen they're like okay like pitch me Pitch me some, <laughs> pitch me some memes, Billy. <laughs> I can totally see this. I know it's happening. <laughs> I know it's happening. WAP. Oh, that's funny. It's a it's a wet cat. <laughs> <laughs> it's a wet ass pussy cat. <laughs> love it. Creativity. Uh, I love the internet. Uh, anyway, I think that's probably a good place to wrap it. We've been going <laughs> yeah, for a we're, bit. We're off the rails. Yeah, we here, went dude. off the rails there. Uh, <laughs> Hope you guys had a good time on the stream. Hope you learned something. Hope I didn't ruin your lives too much. Um, definitely had a little, little bit of a free flowing episode today. But that was fun, man. Yeah, that was a good time. We had some good, uh, we had some good nuggets in there for you. Uh, a reminder to uh, check out the Discord at uh, alfalfapod.com if you want to come hang out. Discord is popping. The Gem Hunters channel is full <laughs> of shit coins. So many shit people. Coins. That channel has like ten times the volume as any other channel now. It's just like the perfect encapsulation of the cycle. That's what the people want. They want to trade the memes. They want to speculate on the memes. They want to pitch. They want to they want to ride them to Valhalla or mostly hell together. You know, <laughs> it's great. And I'm here for it. Just meme meme responsibly, everybody. You know, just know what you're getting into, and everything's cool. Um, and yeah, give me a give me a follow on Twitter if you're not following me at zero uh, x magic lines, and be sure to. Subscribe to the pod on YouTube. Maybe join the live one day. We have a lot of fun. Yeah, give us uh, a like while you're get at to it. Throw some. Uh, that's right. Yeah, like the like the stream, like the video, do all the things. And uh, Stevens traveling next week, so probably no pod. So. Yeah, probably no pod next week, guys. Uh, I expect you all to be back the week after. Don't abandon me, please. Yeah, we hope that we get a nice little accumulation period. Like yeah, you said. hopefully, like I go and nothing happens. That'd yeah. be great. Just want to come back. Everything's exactly the same. I don't feel like I've missed anything, uh, and then we can uh, pick it up from there. I have a feeling we're gonna have a you know a, a quarter or two of maybe uh, of uh, buying some uh, buying some down coins, but who knows? Maybe uh, maybe Bitcoin has uh, other things uh, in mind for us over the next few days. We'll see. Um, but yeah, we'll see you back here, guys. Uh, same time uh, next week, 5 p.m. Pacific time with the stream. And until then, uh, may all your memes. Go ever higher. <laughs> See you, everybody. Bye.